my boys and them that only flop. You know we really got to be the flop. You have to run. What's up to my Garden Coils crew? I really hope that all of my naturalistas out there are in the Halloween spirit because a new horror film has just come out about a killer weave that has literally been taking this naturalista on the ride of her life. We're getting into the hidden messages in the most pivotal points of the movie in my opinion and yes this review is coming from a naturalista that loves her natural hair that unapologetically wears her weave and yes I work in corporate America. Let's get into it. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys I am super scary horror films are not my thing and I guarantee I'm gonna have a nightmare but I figured that in order to balance out all of this horror and all of this fright that I'll be feeling later on I'm definitely getting a snack and I'm gonna make sure that it's something sweet to balance out the tartness of this movie so I hit up my good line sister V to get me a recipe to watch this movie bars. Hmm. Did someone say ice cream in 20 seconds? You want your pumpkin, you want that good old sweet condensed milk, a little sprinkle of this, a dash of that, you get that in, whip it, <laughs> whip it, whisk it, whisk it, plop it, and freeze it. I've got my freshly made pumpkin spice ice cream and let's get into this. That's how you feel. You feel like it's calling your name. I really do feel something. Plants where the stuff is magic. That's cat. You know, in some parts of India, a woman's hair is her most prized possession. It's the greatest sacrifice she can make to her gods. <laughs> this came all the way from India? Listen. Forget about where it's we'll from. We'll talk about this in a minute. When it comes to the weed, people always forget about where it's from. <laughs> a lot of these... This weave is taken from people who honestly by You're choice tender, or if it wasn't due to circumstance, I they would not head. willingly give up their hair to be made into wefts and bundles. <laughs> Childhood scars. Don't worry, we're gonna get into it. <laughs> You guys ever hear that saying, you can't just put a band-aid on a deep scar? A band-aid is a quick fix. It always opens back up. And I'm thinking that is what's seeping onto the stylist's hands. It's Anna's childhood. It's the pain that Anna went through when receiving a relaxer. It's bringing back the memories of her altering herself from a younger age although her sister was the one that was giving her a relaxer just in case you guys have not watched at the start of the movie there's a scene of younger anna and she's sitting with the relaxer in her hair and we all know that the creamy crack burns so she's having an interaction with her older sister and her older sister saying girl it's about time you got this done it's supposed to burn and she's taking her to the bathroom to wash the relaxer out and some of Anna's hair comes out and she suffers a burn a burn that leaves a scar so in this scene it's showing that style is going back over that scar and you start to notice that there's some type of a black substance that is on the stylist's hands and I feel like those are Anna's childhood wounds starting to open back up and so it's like that subconscious when we know we're doing something that's wrong and we know that's something we're doing something that's essentially against the way that we've been raised or the moral compass or something like that and it's our subconscious telling us you're reverting you're reverting move forward you're reverting and so that temporary bandage is starting to be pulled off from Anna struggling ultimately with what I'm thinking is her struggling with just accepting herself the way she is oh mama uh, I have tried it who does your hair no one me aren't you tired of it 
all the stares you get walking through the R&B lobby, everyone wondering why you're here. If you went to any other floor in this tower for a job interview, you wouldn't get past reception. And you know that. The sisters get fired for less than that every day. And music people have certain expectations and my girls need to flow. It's hurting. Really. Who this is getting me tight? I wonder. Oof. You want to be one of my girls? Yes. Listen, a lot of the time, I feel like within our community, our melanin community, we love to say, oh, it could never be me. I wish somebody would say that to me and all of these things. We all know you can always say what you won't tolerate it can never be you but sometimes if you're put in a situation you never really know how you would react and I actually had a situation similar to Anna but the person that I had that interaction with was a male co-worker and so I essentially started in this position again in the healthcare industry like management space whatever and I was wearing my hair in afrocentric hairstyles and then I had decided at this point that I wanted like a straight weave with a bang so I was given bang before bang was out and I remember coming into work after a fresh hairstyle and there was this co-worker that I was extremely cool with and you know we would chat all the time and I told him like oh I'm getting used to the hairstyle you know I'm used to my thicker like more afrocentric hair I didn't use the terminology afrocentric but he knew what I was speaking to and then the co-worker said oh I like your hair blah 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 that was the end of the interaction then it was a day after and he said can I be honest with you and I said yeah sure he's like your hair makes you look weak I was like what because I'm really thinking that, you know, I didn't hear him correctly. He said that your hair makes you look weak. And I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? And he said, you just look weak. Like when you walked around the corner yesterday, you just look weak. You don't look confident. You don't look like the person that I know, like the hair doesn't suit you. And I was so taken aback that I actually just disengaged from the conversation that we were having, which was about work. And afterwards he started to ask me if I was okay because he felt like I was acting where he was like did I offend you and I was just saying like no I'm fine I'm one of those people when confrontation happens I cannot address it head on because it's not going to work well and I know that I'm in a work setting so I sit I come back to work the next day and I say to him I'm like listen you know what you did offend me and what was the most insulting is that you would insinuate that a hairstyle is what makes me strong or what makes me competent like honestly I know my work ethic and I'm not even being arrogant at this point I know my work ethic and the thing about me is academically I've always been smart like what they would consider smart but the reason that I feel like I've gotten to the place in life that I'm at is genuinely because of the work ethic the reality is that most of the time you're not going to outwork me and that's the thing that keeps me pushing and I just emphasize all of these things to him and it's not that I was trying to prove to him like oh I am confident it was more so don't you ever insult a woman talking about her hair makes her look weak or it makes her look small you look at the way someone carries themselves, you look at output, you look at deliverables, you look at that person's ability to even assist you when you need help. That's what you look at. You don't look at my hair. Okay? When I say a read for filth without using profanity, I was so proud of myself after that. The only thing that I'm still upset about is that I waited a day afterwards to say what I had to say. I'm being childish, but sis went from like a 22, 24 inch to a nice 18 body bump. Okay, sis, not the hair change mid scene. Yup. 
that hair has a mind of its own i'm telling you okay so ultimately she's just had this encounter where her landlord has tried to rape her and ultimately this weave install has gotten a mind of its own and it actually kills the man that is attacking her the reality is that she's just now coming to her senses that this hair literally has a mind of its own and although this is exaggerated because it's a film the reality is that when we think about weave and we think about bundles whether you're like oh i'm getting that brazilian malaysian cambodian all of that other stuff this is human hair that is coming from other people's head and you know when we're going through styling you may not think about it so deeply but even think about what you do with your natural hair what's one of the main things that society says when a woman cuts her hair it's a brand new woman a lot of people tend to cut their hair after severing ties of certain relationships whether that be a work relationship um a romantic relationship removing yourself from bad habits that you used to place upon yourself things of that nature a lot of the time when you cut your hair it's letting go of that dead energy so essentially when you're wearing weave that is human hair you're taking the energy that someone let go and you're essentially attaching it to your being you're attaching it to your being even when you think about the maintenance of hair that's put into your head it's like if you get curly hair that's a certain comes from a certain area you have to learn what you need to do to cater to that hair it's like you're catering to something outside of your being this is literally a new attachment to you and although in this scene it essentially helped her because she was being attacked she's realizing this is not mine and i don't know what energy this hair carries are these rules but Really want to quit the game? Her friend is not with it. Girl, follow your gut instinct. And it's fun. I'm telling you. It's like, it's like Halloween or something. People look at you. That's the biggest okie doke. And somehow you become more of yourself. <laughs> or at least a bigger version. Girl, you talking all that? Mm. Uh uh uh. I don't believe you. Look, let's just get through this season and then take that shit out. Why would you want to wear? We're all to Jamaica or something. All of that for Jamaica. Jamaica, baby. Girl, please, by the time you finish <laughs> with yourself, you won't even want to go to Jamaica. Okay, so look. That is the biggest okie doke that someone can tell you. That you're just doing something for the short term short term turns into long term so easily how many times have you told yourself oh i'm just going to have one chip speaking of that speaking of food let me continue with my ice cream you've told yourself oh i'm just going to have one chip oh i'm only going to do this short term oh i'm only going to entertain that person for a little bit i'm not going to get too involved we tell ourselves these lies all of the times to justify what we want to do in that moment and a lot of the time you know that what you're doing you even shouldn't be doing it for a hot second let alone saying oh i'll just do it for a couple of months what she's essentially saying to her friend is to transform your look get the weave just for now to get through the season of the program that her friend wants to bring to the tv since you know they're in television and the reality is that that's not true i'm telling you getting in the habit of conforming is an extremely slippery slope it's like the one subtle thing that you do sometimes you feel like how do i one up myself now that i've done this it gets regular so at this stage anna has just started wearing weave she's like oh it's great it's all of this stuff the weave that she has is going to get old to her at a certain point. The next thing you know, she's saying, now I need contact, contacts. The next thing you know, she may be saying, oh, let me bleach my skin just to lighten it 
up a bit when you start getting into the habit of altering yourself it becomes a slippery slope i even know this for things that are less significant like when I start playing in makeup, then all of a sudden I feel like I can't go anywhere without wearing makeup. Even for subtle things in our everyday lives, we know that it becomes a slope of you start to feel like you can't live without it. Anna, mama, how long does the morning routine take? Because the here at night is on wham. If I went to bed at night with my hair like that, I'm going to work like that tomorrow morning. Y'all already know how the hair gives it up. Anna's hair is on wham in the evening and pulled together in the morning. <laughs> talk a lot of shit. How I start off but most of my is, statements. I can't fault you for doing whatever it takes to get what they keep trying to keep us from getting. Mm -hmm. That's and real rap. The hair looks good. <laughs> it's probably why I'm so mad. You know, in a perfect world, a woman would be able to wear her hair. To Excuse the profanity, to. but yes, mamas. <laughs> that's how I feel. Well, um, that's really getting to me because I just really encourage people to practice that same grace when you're in different settings and you're encountering people that identify the same as you so in this case it's if you identify as black sometimes you know we see our black colleagues come into a setting if someone's new and you notice them playing like the game at first they're trying to figure it out you may feel like they're conforming you notice different things in the inflections in their voice the way they carry themselves when they get in different settings and I always just choose to practice grace because people are still trying to figure out you have to acclimate to the culture of a workplace. You have to acclimate into a new person that you're transitioning into. We're all just trying to figure it out at all stages. So I personally don't take the approach of saying that someone's tap dancing or someone's trying to get approval to be in the other people's group or anything like that. It's like, I can't fault you for trying to say I'm going to do what I need to do to get ahead. And my thought is that that moment of enlightenment is always going to come to someone. It just has to come in their own time. They have to realize things for themselves. You can't go off of someone else's experience. All right. She made herself a wig. She sees herself in the mirror and she thinks she looks good. Almost like someone else was staring back at her. Someone was. She came across a slave crying on account of Massa's whip and looked down and see her wig start drinking the blood from his wound. What kind of moss is this, she say. But with his dying breath, he tell her, that ain't moss. That's the hair of witches from the before time. They need blood to grow strong enough to take over a person's body. Then they can come back to the world. Before you know it, you don't even recognize who you're looking at because this structure has changed you so much. You don't enjoy the things that you used to enjoy because you always think about the fact that you have to be this certain way. And a lot of the time, there's this existing fear that if you allow yourself to speak too much slang in your free time, if you allow yourself to get too wild in the colors that you put on your nails and the way that you wear your hair, that it'll be a harder adjustment when you get back to that corporate setting. These are the things that the black woman is always battling in the workplace. Why do we wait until we're going on vacation or going on a break to get full locks or to get box braids or to wear your hair in space buns or something like that? You do all of that stuff because you don't want people to view you differently in that workplace as well and don't even get me into the compliments that you get once your hair is straightened or once you're wearing a straight weave all of a sudden you notice that your counterparts they acknowledge you in a different way listen guys all in all i would highly recommend that you all watch bad hair just think that this is a good basis for starting those conversations in the home or amongst your friend groups about essentially just 
creating your boundaries and creating your hard stops and saying this is me this is authentic me that I'm going to continue to be in every space things get so difficult once you actually get into the workforce and once you actually start seeing what you feel like people needed to do to be successful so having those conversations amongst yourself earlier on and also having that conversation within yourself about what you're sticking to and what you're not going to do is so beneficial so please check out bad hair and a shout out to justin simon for putting this amazing movie together and to Hulu for hosting it on their platform. Peace.